Once you've got a working prototype of your new product, you might be thinking that you can just now tell a manufacturer to make more of them and you're off to dominate the market. Maybe you're thinking, how hard can it be to just make more? Development was the hard part, right? Well, I wish it was that easy and that you could just jump straight from a prototype to mass market success, but making a few prototypes is a whole lot different than mass producing thousands or millions of them. So we're going to look at several different manufacturing strategies for new hardware products once you're ready to begin scaling up production. So the first strategy I want to talk about is offshore turnkey manufacturing, which for electronic products usually means China or Taiwan. And the term turnkey simply means the entire product is manufactured by a single manufacturer. This option has the advantage of being the lowest cost, but it's also the most challenging to properly oversee and manage. This is because the factory is most likely on the other side of the world with a huge time difference. It also means that there's significant travel cost and complexities if you want to visit the factory in person. With offshore manufacturing, you don't have a whole lot of control over the process and you have little oversight since it's so difficult for you to visit the factory. Often with Asian manufacturing, it can be challenging to know if you're dealing directly with the actual factory itself or if you're dealing with a third party middle person. And although manufacturing in China or Taiwan will have the lowest cost, it also has the most potential risk and headaches. In most cases, offshore turnkey manufacturing is going to be your best option once you've reached higher production volume. Now, keep in mind that in 2019, the U.S. imposed a tariff on electrical components and sub-assemblies that are imported from China. But this tariff doesn't apply to completely finished products. So if you're in the U.S., you can avoid this tariff by doing the full product manufacturing offshore. Now, this tariff initially set as high as 15%, but the good news is that they've started to decrease it in 2020, and they've been also have begun granting exemptions for a variety of electronic products, including some printed circuit boards. However, these exemptions only apply to two and four layer rigid boards. And for now, the tariff still applies to higher layer count boards, as well as flex boards and specialized boards that are made from aluminum or ceramic. This is constantly evolving. So be sure that you check with the latest status of these tariffs before making any manufacturing decisions. I'd suggest working with your logistics company to help you accurately estimate the duties and tariffs that specifically apply for your product category. One option to avoid this tariff is to do your manufacturing somewhere other than China. Manufacturing in Taiwan is a good option because they have a sophisticated manufacturing infrastructure and by manufacturing there you can bypass this tariff which only applies to China. And being geographically close to China also means that Taiwanese manufacturers can easily source components from China. You could also do offshore manufacturing in a country like India or Mexico. However, in general, electronics manufacturing is predominantly done in Asia. Now, there are, of course, disadvantages to offshore manufacturing. And some of these can be especially impactful in the early days of a startup when production volumes are still low. You can have quality control problems regardless of where you manufacture your product. That being said, when you manufacture your product in a faraway location, it's just going to be a lot harder for you to monitor the manufacturing quality. When quality control issues do pop up, well, then it's harder to resolve them given the time zone differences and language barriers. You should also personally visit any factory that's going to be making your product. One reason is to make sure that your manufacturer in China isn't a third party sourcing agent. And although working with a sourcing agent isn't necessarily a bad thing, you obviously need to know that they're taking a small piece of the profit. Manufacturing your product in China means that your product inventory starts off on the opposite side of the planet from where you need it assuming that you're in the U.S. Well, you have two options for shipping your product from China to the U.S., and those are you can ship it by air or by sea. Shipping your product by air is, of course, the quickest option, but it's also going to be the most expensive. And the shipping costs can really cut into your profit margin significantly. The heavier your product is, the more expensive it's going to be to ship it by air, and it's best to only ship small quantities of your product by air or only when it's absolutely necessary. Many years ago with my own product, I got a really nice size order from Home Depot, but I had a big problem. Home Depot wanted the order filled quickly, but I didn't have enough inventory in my US warehouse to fill this order. So I decided in this case that it made sense to ship by air, even though it would cost a lot more. In general, 
you're going to ship most of your inventory by sea cargo, and it's just much, much cheaper than shipping it by air. The downside, of course, is it's going to be quite slow. On average, it takes about three to four weeks to ship your product by sea from China to a West Coast port in the U.S. like Los Angeles. Almost everyone you deal with professionally in China is going to speak English, but it's rare to work with a native English speaker. Although everyone I've dealt with in China can speak and write in English, there are a lot of scenarios where miscommunication can cause serious mishaps or delays. The time difference between your location in China can also be a significant logistical issue, especially if you're in the Western Hemisphere. For example, 9 a.m. Eastern Time in the U.S. is 10 p.m. in Beijing. Even email communication can have a lag time of 24 hours to get a reply. So between the language barrier and the time difference, live phone calls can also be very problematic. In general, expect most of your communication to be limited to emails, especially when discussing technical details. In general, everything is going to take longer to do in China. That's mainly because of the time zone differences, language barriers, and just the physical distance. But it's especially true when you're trying to debug any technical or manufacturing issues. That's why I typically recommend that you do your first manufacturing runs closer to home. This way you can work out any bugs in your manufacturing and assembly processes. Then once you have things running smoothly, then that's when you should transfer manufacturing over to China to lower your manufacturing costs. So the next option that we're going to look at for manufacturing is domestic manufacturing which means having your product manufactured in your own country. Most likely, you would import all of the electronic parts, though. Some parts may be available from domestic suppliers, but in general, a lot of them are going to be manufactured and shipped from China. So if you're in the U.S., you're likely going to still be paying a high tariff on all the components that you order, even though you'll be doing the manufacturing of the printed circuit board domestically. Even excluding the tariffs, it's going to be more expensive to manufacture domestically because everything, most importantly labor, is going to be more expensive in most countries than it would be in China or Taiwan, except maybe with you know India being an exception or some other countries. The big advantage to manufacturing domestically, though, is it gives you much more oversight. It's so much easier for you to visit a factory that's just a few hours away by car or plane. Problems are always going to come up during manufacturing, whether you're a small startup or a large company. Nothing, nothing ever runs perfectly from the very beginning, and dealing with these issues domestically is just going to be a lot simpler and quicker. The ease of oversight and level of convenience that you get with domestic manufacturing helps to ensure that you're manufacturing and shipping quality products. Of course, with offshore manufacturing, you can still do certain quality checks without visiting the factory, like having samples sent to you regularly. However, manufacturing in a remote location and communicating in a non-native language just makes it that much harder for you to ensure the quality of everything that's produced. You can take the benefits of domestic manufacturing one step further if you find a manufacturer that's really local in your city or at least in your state or province, if you're in Canada, for example. The big downside is that your choices are going to be a lot more limited, though, if you restrict yourself to one local region. Obviously, local manufacturing makes production oversight even that much easier, so that's the big advantage. But just keep in mind, you're going to have a lot fewer options. Your third option is what I call hybrid manufacturing. And this is really my favorite choice when you're starting off with low-volume manufacturing. This hybrid manufacturing combines domestic with offshore manufacturing. This is going to cost a lot less because you're getting the benefit of having some of the more expensive parts of the product manufactured offshore in China or Taiwan, but you're also going to have better oversight domestically than you would if everything was produced offshore. For example, you can have your printed circuit board and your product enclosure manufactured in China or Taiwan, but then do the final product assembly product testing and packaging and shipping all domestically. With hybrid manufacturing, you have a couple of options. What I prefer initially is that is for you or your team to do the product assembly yourselves. That works well for your first runs of maybe 100 units or so. This is going to give you the most insight because you're the one actually doing the final assembly and testing of the product, ensuring it meets all of your quality control standards and that it's packaged and shipped correctly. 
Now, even with a hybrid manufacturing strategy, you're not going to be able to avoid the 15% the tear up that I mentioned earlier if you're importing parts or sub assemblies from China into the US. And this is why, once again, I recommend that you maybe consider Taiwanese factories. You can also consider doing the full product assembly in China to avoid the tariff, but then only do the testing and final packaging domestically. But make sure your product isn't already sealed in a clamshell by your Chinese manufacturer, because then you can't confirm the product quality before shipping it to your customers. Usually, you won't make a profit on your first units but it's typically acceptable to just break even or to even sell your early units at a small loss. The goal is to keep your upfront costs and your upfront risk as low as possible. You can focus on reducing your manufacturing cost later once you scale up production. Ultimately, the best location to manufacture your product depends on your manufacturing volume, which hopefully will continue to increase. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to watch this video next.